right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Joanna Kleiman, who is in New Jersey. How are you doing, Joanna? I am doing great, John. How are you? Great. And uh, Joanna is a licensed psychotherapist, best-selling author and motivational speaker and author of this great book uh, called Dethroning Your Inner Critic, The Four-Step Journey from Self-Doubt to Self-Empowerment. And we're going to talk about it today in the, con in the context of entrepreneurship, work-life balance, and battling your inner critic. So um, let's face it, Joanna, uh, our inner critic is very, very loud, it's very consistent, it's omnipresent. Uh, so, so, and especially then if you're talking about entrepreneurs or people setting up their own business and stuff, you know, it, it all gets amplified somewhat because now you're kind of putting yourself out there on a limb on your own. And guess what? Your, your inner critic is coming along for the ride. Yep, that is for sure. Yes, this is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> yeah. So what are the so what are the what are the steps to starting? I mean, you think about it. Okay, if you're going into business, you're an entrepreneur. You're trying to build your business. Maybe you have a family at home. You're trying to balance everything, and you have this voice continually telling you that uh, everything you're doing is wrong. And you're, 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 you're not achieving anything, you're not satisfying anything, all of those things. So what, what's the first steps to really confronting this and figuring out how to overcome it? Yeah, it's, it's a great question, John. So what I will say, and, and this, is, this is my opinion, but I've worked with thousands of people. Um, so my opinion is that really the most powerful life that you can ever live is when you know the difference between you and the voice of your inner critic. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I call the work that I do dethroning your inner critic, not silencing it, not banishing it, not kicking it to the curb, because it is conditioned within us. It has been with us since we have been little boys and little girls, and it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the step is really about being able to so clearly distinguish exactly what your inner, crit inner critic voice says, why it's saying it, why is it there, so that you can spot it at any given moment. And let's face it, I'm sure you experience this too. It shows up sometimes a thousand times a day. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I like what you said there about the dethroning. So, um, do you, do you feel then that in many ways we elevate it and we put it up on a throne, we put it up on a pedestal and believe it more than we believe evidence to the contrary? Well, the issue is that most people don't know that they are actually separate from the voice of their, of their mind, okay? Mm -hmm. And so we've got, right, our mind is automatic, right? Just like our body breathes for us, right? Our bodies make, makes our heart beat. Our mind just goes. We don't tell it where to go. And we have about 50,000 thoughts per day, which is pretty mind blowing when you sure. think about it. And so, right. So most people listen to that voice as though that voice is them. And so mm -hmm. therefore they fuse with the thoughts and the thoughts create the emotions of fear and doubt, right? And, and what if, right? And, and what I call future tripping, right? Which is where, you know, mm. our inner critics drum up these worst case scenarios. And yeah. so, right. So, so that's really the key is really, you know, most people want to kind of run away from that voice, right? They want to numb themselves to it. They want to distract themselves from it. The work that I do with people is actually about leaning into it so that you can really become so intimately familiar with it. And therefore, in the moment that you see it, right, it's really a moment by moment practice. Mm -hmm. You see it, you can then unhook from it, and then you step into what I will call a new mind, where you're practicing very different thoughts that are in alignment with the life that you're designing instead of your inner critic, which 
actually our inner critic minds really are there because they want to keep us safe and protected, which sure. I know is weird, but that's why we have inner critics in the first place. No, no, no. It, make, it makes complete, uh, complete sense. And what I like about what you just said there is moment by moment practice. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been talking to some people recently about this uh, because I do feel that uh, you know, sometimes when people want to make changes in their lives, like you know, maybe they read something or they listen to something and they go for this big grand gesture, like I'm going to change everything at once. And of course that doesn't work. Uh, but it is these, it is this incremental approach. And as you say, like, you know, moment by moment practice. So what are some of the ways, I mean, it might sound obvious, but what are some of the ways you can recognize that your inner, it's your inner critic telling you something as opposed to maybe the reality, or maybe you need to debunk what your inner critic is saying or explore what it is saying? Sure, sure. Well, so um, I, I created a methodology. I call it the MIND method. Now, mind, mm -hmm. MIND method, it's an acronym. So the I'll, I'll go through it briefly because this yes, is please. the answer to your question. The M step is meet your inner critic. So um, that is where you can actually sit down and do what I call a brain dump and just dump out you know, all of those automatic thoughts, you'll clearly see what your inner critic is saying. The, that's, so, so that's part of the M step. The I step is investigate the indication signs. So I call those the blinking red lights. In other words, mm -hmm. the emotions, the body sensations, and the behaviors that we engage in when we are fused with our inner critic mind. So, you know, I say it's like, you know, when you want to, you know, just get into bed and binge watch Netflix or drink a bottle of wine or, you know, eat a whole or boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so it's like, the, you know, or you want to like scream at somebody, you know, that cut you off in traffic or scream at your kid or something, right? These are the times, right? Those are the warning signs. The end step is neutralize the never ending message. And here is where it becomes interesting. You know, we think that we have new thoughts and we think that our thoughts are, you know, created by our circumstances. Mm -hmm. We have fundamentally the same exact thoughts over and over and over again. So when you really start to understand what your inner critic mind is saying, you'll recognize you had a 10 year old version of it you had a 20-year-old version of it. You have your now version of it. It's basically sort of regurgitating the same broken record, which is really connected to a, a fundamental core belief, right? Mm -hmm. And then the D step is design your life. And that is when you're practicing all these other steps, when you're, right, when you're using your indication signs and you're recognizing and neutralizing the never ending message and you're really distinguishing the difference between you and your inner critic. Now you can create different thoughts that are going to create emotions that are in alignment with that life that you're designing. You can actually, you know, see fundamentally fear and excitement physiologically right. is the exact same thing, right? So you're either operating from fear, right? Based on what your inner critic is saying, or you can get invigorated and excited for the possibility that you're designing moving forward. Yeah, no, I love that actually. I did zip lining there for the first time a couple of weeks ago, about 70 foot up in the air, like 29 mm -hmm. zip lines. I can tell you fear and excitement to get, get meshed up together very, very quickly. Absolutely. <laughs> So there's a lot, a lot I wanted to, to come back to on that. Uh, so on, on the first piece here, when you say, you know, meet your inner critic and that, I guess there's a part of it where you have to acknowledge that, you're, that you're, your inner critic is serving a purpose for you. And maybe you have been using it as a means to stay in your comfort zone and avoid doing things, avoid making changes, all of those things. So I guess there's a part of it where you have to sort of acknowledge that, yeah, you've kind of allowed your inner critic to sit on the throne you've, and you kind of like it in some ways. And now is you've got to make your decision about whether you're going to go forward and make those changes or whether you're going to stay in the comfort zone. Mm. Well, here's what's interesting, okay? So it's not only the voice that keeps you stuck in your comfort zone. So the flip side of this 
is that it's also the voice that says, you're only good enough if you accomplish your goals. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm sure you know people like this, and, you know, we know people like this even in the public eye, right? They, for all intents and purposes, are extremely successful, right? They've had this driving force that's had them achieve goal after goal after goal after goal. And yet their lives are miserable, right? They're right. on their third marriages and they, right? They're just broken people. And so it's not just that voice that keeps you stuck in not going for your dreams. It's also the voice that when people are going for their dreams, they're achieving their dreams and they're still miserable. And that is heartbreaking. Mm. And that, that's really fascinating. And I think it's, um, it, it is because I do think that sometimes when you talk to people and you, as you say, people who, who are unhappy, but you look at them and you think about all they've achieved, it's that they don't recognize those achievements. They don't realize, and you're right. I mean, I guess there's a voice inside them saying, well, you didn't really do that or you got, or yeah, or yeah, yeah, you achieved that, but you didn't achieve this. Yes. And, and I think we're really bad at actually looking at, 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 you know, in the cold light of, I was like the 4 a.m. moment when you can't sleep and, you know, the whole reality of life is in front of you, is that we're not very good at looking at our achievements. Yes. And, and we want to, you know, th this is the thing. We, as a culture, we're not taught how to think, right? Mm -hmm. So we have thoughts, but we're not taught how to intentionally think. And so there's a big difference when you are going for your dreams and goals, but you're feeling really good and happy and fulfilled and content right now. Because mm -hmm. then, right, I mean, we, we all hear this, right? Life is a journey, not a destination, right? But, there, but really, so few people really live that. And that mm -hmm. is, that's the basis of my work because I... I think that the more people that are really living that, right, where they are really appreciating exactly who they already are, exactly the life that they're already living, exactly what they've already accomplished to your point, right? They're still creating what's next, but it's not from a need. I need mm. that in order to feel fulfilled. And I think that has the power to transform our planet. Yeah, because I would think, I think it was, I think it's James Joyce in one of his books, but he took the concept of living at arm's length from yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what a lot of people do is, as you say, rather than enjoying the journey, living in the moment, all of that is everything is at least one arm's length away. It's always next week, next month, next year, the next thing, then I'll be happy. That's right. That's it. And, and the thing is, listen, our culture perpetuates that. We're sure. all about, about, right? And so it's like not, we have to go against our cultural conditioning, mm -hmm. our, our historical conditioning, our biological conditioning. I mean, this is not easy to intentionally practice thinking in a fundamentally different way than the way most of the world thinks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is why I really tried to condense it into like a step by step, yeah. step moment no, by I, moment practice. Yeah, I love it. And and as you were saying, like the indication signs, the warning lights, the traffic, you know, those those blinking red lights is uh, triggers are are interesting, aren't they? Because they they can come, as you say, they can come from childhood, teenage. It can come from any any part of your life. And they're, they can so derail you until you start to recognize what they are. Yes, yes. And what is so fascinating, right, is that the more that we really look at our triggers, and it can come from two completely different parts of life. You know, for me, mm -hmm. when, when I'm practicing dethroning my inner critic, I would say the two areas, right, that my inner critic shows up the most are in my business, and in parenting three teenagers. I currently have mm -hmm. three teenagers, right? And yeah. so it's still the same message that shows up. There's two completely separate areas of my life, but it's basically the same message, right? My inner critic's go-to is always, you know, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. But I know that that's not really me. So at any given moment when it grabs me by the throat, I'm able to unhook from it and then step into who do I want to be as a powerful businesswoman? 
who do I want to be as their mom, right? Such that I'm not automatically reacting. Yeah, and I, and I just think it's so fascinating. And I think sometimes people don't spend enough time like questioning this when, especially, I always think there's a key. It's when some situation and maybe it goes a little south and you're, and you're there, well, well, that was weird. How did that happen? But if you go back and look at it, you can see, oh, that person said something to me that really sounded like some other message that I had gotten in the past. And I immediately wasn't even in the, com- even in the conversation anymore. Cause now my hope, you know, cause you had the physiological reaction, like you just said. And I think that's the thing that people don't understand about tr- triggers is they're just mental, physical, physiological. They can be all consuming. They are. Well, here's people don't understand. It's never the circumstances. Yeah. Right. That determine how we feel. It is always our thoughts about the circumstances. So there's, you know, there's just what's so, right? Mm -hmm. We lost the sale, we failed at something, right? We made a mistake. There's the what's so, and then there is our automatic story, right? That gets whipped up by our inner critic. And that is Mm -hmm. so powerful when you can really distinguish the facts of what's so from the story that's yeah. getting whipped up in your mind. It's really a game changer in how people can live their life moving forward. Yeah, it's like that concept of when something like that happens, as you said, when a sale goes south or when something happens in your business or something happens in your personal life and everything. And the reaction seems to be, seems to be, to be so much more than it warrants. Yes. That's when yeah. you have to ask yourself the question, what's really going on? That's it. And I think that's where you, you can dig in and find your trick. You say, what's really going on? And yes, it's disappointing. And yes, I should be upset to this degree, but not to this degree. So what is really going on? That's it. That's it. And that's the pathway to really starting to take responsibility for our own thoughts and emotions and mm. behaviors, right? Because that really produces the results in our, in our lives. It starts with our thoughts that lead to certain emotions that lead to certain behaviors. So when we are able to really powerfully choose how we're going to think, we can drum up different emotions that cultivate different behaviors that actually start to produce completely different results moving Mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. And and that then neutralizes that whole thing where people go, oh, well, you know what I'm like. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because I love when people goes, oh, well, you know what, you know what I'm like, or you know what they're like. I'm going, yeah, but they could always change. You know, it's okay. <laughs> our fundamental parts of our personalities that have been created by our mm-hmm. inner critic and we're not even aware yeah. of it. it so it, ex- doing, yeah, it, it, doing the work actually dissolves some of those old parts of the personality and you can actually start to cultivate brand new parts of your personality. It's, it, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's, and it's exciting. And that's what life should be. Isn't it? Oh, it's all about evolution and continuing to evolve. But I come back again to what you said earlier is like the moment by moment practice, because I do think that this is something really important for people to take away because as I said, sometimes people, you know, they try to go after these huge things and and make massive changes all together overnight. And of course it doesn't work. And then they go, well, I tried. Uh, it's the, and, and in many ways, it's much harder to make, it's much harder because it requires a commitment to do the moment by moment change. It does. It requires um, awareness, right? It's, awareness. you know, I, I liken it to exercise, right? It's like, mm-hmm. if you want to have a fit body, You've got to get conscious of eating right most of the time mm-hmm. and doing, a, you know, some exercise. You, but you've got to, you've got to do that in order to be fit. It's the same thing, right? It's like we've got to be able to consciously know how to think so that we can produce the life that we're really meant to be living. Yeah, and, and, I, and I like that analogy about fitness because I always think that there are plenty of times when you don't want to do it, right? That's you don't right. want to do your fitness routine, you don't do your workout, whatever it is you do. Yes. But there is never a time when you regret doing it. There are plenty <laughs> so, of times you, you do not want to do it and you almost have to force yourself to do it, but you'll never regret doing it. Now, you will regret to say, well, I should have done it if you don't do it or whatever. And I think it's the, 
I think it's the same thing if you can get yourself into this mindset as you'd like doing the moment by moment work is that, yeah, yeah it, you might want to do it. And there might be times when you want to skip on it, but I doubt you're ever going to regret doing it. Yeah, I think, I think essentially what you're saying, right? So there's, there's discomfort, right? Yeah. But we have discomfort if we're not going for yeah. living the life of our dreams. And there's also discomfort involved in actually going for it because we do have to step out of our comfort zone. We do have to do things in the face of fear and in the, in the face of the unknown and in the face of, you know, what if we fail and what if we get rejected? Mm -hmm. That's uncomfortable too. But I would, if I'm going to be uncomfortable either way, <laughs> I yeah. would rather be uncomfortable and learn how to do discomfort on purpose going for the life of my dreams than being held back and being uncomfortable because I know I'm being held back. Yeah, no, I, I think that's beautifully put. And I, I think that's absolutely, and, and I think it's a great message to come out as to say, any, any change like this involves discomfort. It's just like you said. I mean, just like if you want to get fit, if you want to do anything else, it doesn't, there isn't a magic pill you can take it. You know, it, it requires you to get discomfort but you get great satisfaction about going through that discomfort. I think that's the difference is that it's the discomfort that you feel by not doing something compared to the discomfort that you felt while you were doing something. They're very different feelings. Very different. You know, I've been, I've been doing this work for 30 years. Now I didn't call it dethroning your inner critic at the time, right? That was yeah. cultivated out of, you know, all my personal self growth and, and my work as a psychotherapist for over, you know, 25 years. But I can tell you that I use this work every single day. It's actually what cr has created my business in the first place is just the moment by moment by moment you know, unhooking from my inner critic and stepping into, you know, rewiring a different mind that I use uh, moving forward. Yeah, no, I love it. And I love that simple, the, the mind acronym. It's very simple and straightforward. And I, I always say to people right now, you know, especially during this time, this strange time and this strange year we've had is you're probably not going to get a better time to work on yourself, to be perfectly mm. honest, because you've probably had more space and time to yourself than you're used to maybe used to having maybe you don't even want that time and space yourself but you got it so you might as well use it uh, and i think this is the perfect time to do some of this work because i do think if there's anything to come out of all of this it's maybe it was it maybe it was a chance for collective and individual self-reflection i completely agree i think that i think that culturally we needed to, you know, sort of have, I hate to say it, but real, a real smack in the face about a lot yeah. of things. And I, I think that that is what this has provided. You know, I think it, you know, it's, it's not going to immediately resolve itself once the pandemic sure. is over, but, but I think there are so many people that, um, you know, are saying, well, well, once the pandemic is over, then mm -hmm. I will, you know, blah, blah. and, and people don't recognize that it, it's that same conversation. They, they had that conversation going on before the pandemic, right? <laughs> They're just using it sort of as a way to hide out and, you know, stay stuck. Ex exactly, exactly. And it's always, there's always something ahead and it'll be, when well, then it'll be after this and it'll be after that or whatever. So yeah, you have to, you have to, you have to make a conscious choice someday to set up to draw a line in the sand and say, okay, today's the day I start. Yeah. And then, and there's never, and yeah. there's never a perfect time. Never a perfect time. And whatever shows up, you, you, right. You just keep noticing what shows up, noticing what's underneath it and then taking the next step and taking the next step and taking the next step. Yeah, perfect. Listen, this has been fantastic, Joanne. It's so, so nice to talk to you. The book is called Dethroning Your Inner Critic, Four-Step Journey from Self-Doubt to Self-Empowerment. I'd highly recommend that you check it out. All of Joanna's information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm a psychotherapist, a life coach, a corporate coach. Um, so I work with people individually and I work with groups of people. Um, and I have my own podcast, which is called Dethroning Your Inner Critic. Uh, my book is on Amazon. And, um, you know, it's, it's really my life's passion just to support people in really knowing how to design lives that they love. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I am available at my website, dethroningyourinnercritic.com for anybody that wants to have a conversation about uh, taking this work further. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.